So April already offered you some information about um, thinking about monitoring. What are the options and potential of uh, monitoring cultural policy systems? And um, I'd like to repeat just one. Um, there's a really need of relevant and um, evidence-based data for cultural policy making. And um, to reach these goals, we need independent cultural policy researcher. That's what we try to do within the companion. We work with independent researchers um, from different countries from Europe. And um, our main issue and main principle is to learn from each other, because we are pretty much aware of different kind of system, of different kind of ways, um, how to deal with the challenges. And the idea is really to learn from each other. What are the companion? It's a free accessible um, internet platform um, offering a lot of information on cultural policy, um, mainly on um, 45 countries in Europe. And so it's constantly updated. Um, so as April said, on its 20 editions, meanwhile, so you'll find really fresh information on the companion website, which is culturalpolicy.net. Who are our target groups? We have kind of three different target groups, meaning at the one hand, of course, the, the researcher community um, interested in really in-depth information on cultural policy. On the other hand, of course, we do have um, the cultural policy and administration people. <coughs> they are looking for more concentrated, brief information that they really could get very first. And of course, our third group are the cultural practitioners and uh, the public that are interested in cultural policy. Um, to fulfill the different needs of our different target groups, we work with different kind of formats. Our main format are the country profiles. We do have the long country profiles consisting of around 100 pages and the short country profiles of around 10 pages in order to fulfill the different needs. Um, but besides the country profiles, we also offer other types of exchange and provide information. So for instance, we do have uh, WebTorks as a, form, a platform for exchange and communication. We do have a special topic every year um, that is a uh, brand new one, and so you may imagine during the last year we had uh, COVID-19. Um, this time, due to um, the weakness, we had safeguarding artistic freedom. So here you can see the thematic campaigns. And of course, we are meeting in an analog way, um, having our yearly international conferences last year in Bucharest. This time we'll be in Malta on the right to culture. So, and not to forget, we are not only offering information about systems, but we're also offering information about statistics. Here we're, for example, working with the CUPIC. This is an index about prices and cultural goods. What kind of information do we present? Um, here you can see our <coughs> seven main areas of knowledge that we are presenting within our country profiles. So first, of course, there's some information about system. Here we are talking about um, objectives, uh, who are main actors, 
at administration, at policy, but also at civil society, which kind of main organizations do we have in those countries? The heart in the status quo and which types of um, cultural policy are really hot at these countries at the very moment. So that is done by current culture affairs. Here you can see we do have predefined some issues um, that we want to see there, but of course there's space for the specific um, country um, needs. So you will find information on cultural rights, but as well you will find there information about sustainability, about diversity, intercultural dialogue and stuff like that. So this is the heart um, on our second chapter. Um, within the culture and creative sector, you will find a lot of information on infrastructure, on the whole branches. And um, coming to law and legislation, it's not only about taxes and copyrights and stuff like that, but also special legislation for some special branches. We are not talking only about cultural policy, but also about cultural education. And that's why our next chapter is um, uh, introducing to you programs um, on cultural education, but also looking on in-school and out-school types of cultural education. The sixth levels will be about cultural participation and consumption. Who is going to use all these um, offers that are in the cultural field and branches? And um, of course, you'll find a lot of information about financing, funding system. Here we're talking about public and private ones. So this is just to give you a short insight on all the information that we are um, providing within one long profile for each country. And I'd like to invite you to discover all the different types of information. You can compose your own reports um, from the different countries. So you can, for instance, say if, if you are interested in looking at the financing of Armenia, you can compose uh, and um, of France and um, maybe of Sweden, then you com can compose your own um, profile consisting of those three chapters. So this free of um, use, and of course, it's uh, free accessible for all on our website. How are we going to do so? Um, the Companion was founded um, by the Council of Europe and uh, Eric Art as a joint venture in 1998. Um, and it was funded by the Council of Europe until 2017. <coughs> in 2017, the Council of Europe withdrew the funding, so we had to establish a complete new system um, of funding and um, of structuring ourselves. So we built up an international organization and now this association is the heart of our companion, meaning this um, association consists of 24 members. Um, depending on uh, the countries, um, there are they could be research organizations or there could be ministries, and um, each of those countries uh, can be a stakeholder or a standing member, and with their membership fee, now the companion monitoring tool is financed. So this is the new structure we've chosen, but the, really the heart and the foundation of our work are the 100 um, independent experts doing the job, providing the information for the country profiles, for the statistics, um, for the overviews, and um, for all of the information types we are providing. How are we going to find those? Um, we are going to have this open call for each country. So. There could be a group or an individual applying for being an author and an independent expert for the country profiles. And then they had to be proven the expertise and the board of the association is going to decide. So here you can see um, we make really a lot of efforts to find independent researchers to do um, independent research job. And um, the coordinator that is doing the daily business um, is um, uh, based on the Kulturpolitische Gesellschaft, that is a cultural research organization in Germany, so where I'm from, so that's why. Um, I'm wearing the head of the coordinator being there, um, doing the daily business, but I'm also wearing the head of the experts because I'm the one who's writing the profile for Germany. Um, just uh, one more word um, about the grid and the content um, of the profile. So it's not a uh, given structure, but um, we as experts in a really collective process decided which topics we are including into our themes. 
So, and every three or four years, um, we are going to sit together, we decide, okay, now we have to integrate that topic um, into our grid so that it could be presented in every of our country profiles. So it's a really democratic process and um, here we are looking for the different needs of the different 45 countries. You may imagine that um, not every country is really amused to have um, those or that topic um, within the grid, but uh, here you can see how we are working. Of course, uh, there are some international partners we're working like uh, Culture Action Europe um, and uh, some colleagues from ECMORS um, that are the colleagues from the musical area doing the statistics and um, we're working together with IFACA that we've been uh, working a lot before and now there's the last, nearly the last slide is coming. Why are we doing this? Um, of course, we are really interested in providing really evidence-based, independent and in-depth information. But our really aim is um, to build networks um, and to show good practice example um, in order to learn from each other. Just to give you one example, when we had our thematic session on COVID-19, uh, we also had um, tables of measurements, how each country is dealing with that one. So everybody was looking for that one because uh, was trying to find information. How are the others doing? What kind of measurement they had found um, to solve the problem? So this is one example of our way um, of sharing knowledge and uh, that one in that way also strengthen networks of the cultural policy researcher, but not only among themselves, but also among the cultural policy researcher and the cultural politician makers. So, and to bring it again, learning from each other is one of our main issues. I already talked about uh, the cooperation that we had with IFACA, so um, even though now we are focusing on Europe, on the 45 countries in Europe, we had some other times before. So there had been the World CP together with IFACA from 2011 to 2017, where we tried to broaden up the scope of the companion worldwide. And we had also the cooperation with ASEF, the Asian European Foundation, as a World Asian CP. So that stopped in 2017, and now we are trying to broaden up the scope again, and so we are trying with the companion to go beyond Europe. And in order to do that, we have to answer a lot of questions. And um, I just put you um, some of them. For whom we are doing that one, but also who is doing this exercise, who is going to support us, and then which kind of structure. But also, of course, um, what are we reporting, or our independent expert, like, do we have to change grid? In which way do we have to change grid that it could be adapted and used by other um, countries as well? So these are just a few questions, um, and I'd like to end with that. And uh, thank you for your uh, listening. And um, my colleague Oliver Goebel, who wanted to be here as well, couldn't come with me. And uh, my colleague Leonard Mertens, um, we are the three being at the Companion Coordinator. And um, thanks for your attention. Thanks, thanks very much to Ulrika. Um, do we have Alexandra now yep. from um, Ukraine?